and welcome back to World Talks, Amanda Jabuinska. Right now joining me is Heather Grapp, Senior Fellow at Bruegel, to talk about the issue we were just discussing. Good morning, ma'am. Thank you very much for joining me today. Good morning. So Hungary and Slovakia failed to reduce um, their energy dependence on Moscow, and now they're expecting help from the, e, um, the EU. What might be the mood among the EU diplomats? And we know that Hungary is, ready, is already high on their agenda. They already have problem with that country. What about now? What is the mood among EU leaders? Well, EU diplomats from the other member states are very frustrated uh, about what's happened now. Back in 2022, when um, the after the invasion of Ukraine by Russia, the EU members agreed to reduce dramatically and, and to end their dependence on imports of Russian gas and oil. And the member states made great efforts to do this uh, with a considerable degree of success. Um, and in particular, um, the uh, the imports of oil by pipeline through the Druzhba um, pipeline were exempted on the understanding that there would be um, a phase out by the countries that were dependent on it. Um, and this phase out was supposed to happen rather rapidly. That did happen from Poland and Germany, which phased out their imports quickly. Um, Slovakia has also made efforts. But Hungary has not. And in fact, Hungary has even ramped up its import through this pipeline. So this is contrary both to uh, the agreement that was made among the member states, but also the overall EU approach, which is to deny oil revenues to Putin because they are fueling the war machine um, against Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So no. the, the frustration mm -hmm. is that the EU, from the other EU members is that Hungary is now going back not only on, on an agreement from 2022, but actually moving in the other direction. And as we said in the presentation, it has increased its pipeline oil imports by 50% compared to 2021. Now, do you think that Hungary and Slovakia did it on purpose? They, they knew this time will come and yet did not, they did not look for alternatives. Well, I think Slovakia has, in fact, made uh, efforts. There, there mm -hmm. is also a division among political leaders in Slovakia, with um, Prime Minister Fico turning more towards Russia uh, recently, uh, whereas the President Pellegrini um, is much more concerned about this issue. Uh, whereas in Hungary, it's very different. Hungary. Um, particularly Prime Minister Orban, has repeatedly blocked uh, EU aid, military aid to Ukraine, as well as pushing against EU common positions, both on uh, de the dependency on, on Russia, but also more broadly on the EU's approach to Russia. And now Hungary has the, pre the presidency of, of the um, EU Council of Ministers, and Orban has used that position to visit Moscow. Uh, it was an unauthorized uh, visit that was not agreed with the other member states. And he's also uh, made visits to, to Beijing and Washington. So this, this sense that Hungary is pulling away from the other member states, uh, is blocking common positions, blocking the, the position on Ukraine and aid to Ukraine, is causing immense frustration on the most important geopolitical issue that the EU faces. Now, frustration is one thing. However, Hungary and Slovakia, now they have gone to the rule book and they're arguing that penalties violated the 2014 trade deal between Kiev and the EU. And that is why they're asking the European Commission to intervene. So is European Commission, do they have to intervene in that case? Well, there, there is this agreement between the EU and Ukraine. It dates from the period before uh, the invasion, so it's from a very different situation. Uh, and it was a trade deal, uh, which has got rules attached to, to the trade. But um, I would argue, and, and I think um, most of the, uh, not only the diplomats in EU, other member states, but also uh, the commission would argue that that is no longer valid after the invasion. The question is, how do you apply the trade agreement that was uh, agreed so long ago, a decade ago, before the invasion, um, in these kinds of circumstances. Um, and many aspects of that agreement have changed in the meantime. Uh, other member states have, have voluntarily uh, reduced their dependencies, but also um, many of the uh, aspects of trade have changed because of the EU allowing Ukraine more imports in order to help them during that period, as well as, of course, the sanctions on Russia. And I think sanctions are going to be the most important issue uh, that um, in order to apply the sanctions, uh, then the EU needs to have a different kind of relationship, uh, both in, in terms of uh, how it applies the trade rules, but also in, in terms of the, the hierarchy of priorities with geopolitical ones coming higher up the list now. 
Mm -hmm. Now, um, on June 24th, Kiev decided to extend its sanctions on Russian oil. I mean, they're uh, especially on transit through Ukraine territory. Now, in this case, who is losing, which country is losing more? Who is being hit more? Is it Russia or would you say Hungary and Slovakia? Well, Russia wants to sell um, its oil and its gas however it can and is seeking every means of doing so on international markets and also through um, methods of, of uh, undermining the sanctions. So, so they will they will sell uh, with any opportunity. Um, and of course, they lose revenue if they are no longer selling. But their dependence um, on selling to uh, Hungary and Slovakia is much less than the dependence of Hungary in particular on, um, on Russia in, in, in terms of fuel imports. We're now in the summer, so oil is still important for transport and, and other mm. methods. But what's important um, going forward is going to be when the winter comes. Um, and whether uh, Hungary has made the transition so that they have alternative sources of fuel um, in the colder winter months. Now, they've now had two years to make that transition and find alternative sources, which is what all of the other member states have done. Um, they now are going to have to act very quickly uh, if they don't want to incur difficulties this winter. So what, what options do they have? Well, there, there are various things that they can do, which, of course, Poland, Germany, the other, and, and indeed the Czech Republic have done, which is to source other supplies so they can bring in oil uh, through other pipelines, also uh, through, uh, you know, through tankers and, and so on. But the key thing is changing the heating system, because, of course, it's not just about replacing Russian oil with other oil. It's about moving towards renewables. And the EU has a European Green Deal. Um, it has the Fit for uh, 55 plan. It also has the renewable new um, EU plan for energy independence, all of which are EU-wide policies with money attached for the member states to help them move towards renewable energy, which then doesn't have these kinds of toxic dependencies on foreign imports. So if Hungary had been investing in uh, the renewable energies, which would have given it independence in this circumstance, it wouldn't have faced this difficulty. It's because of having continued the dependence on Russia and then even increasing that dependence uh, that this difficulty is faced. So the EU can understandably say, well, look, we've got this policy of moving towards renewables. We've uh, we've provided money um, and strategic help, um, infrastructure development and so on to use it. Now is the time to go much faster down that route. Mm -hmm. Now, the situation is, you know, complicating pretty quickly because Budapest Foreign Minister Peter Shairto said Hungary would continue to withhold EU military aid to Ukraine until sanctions are lifted. Um, also, also, we have Slovakian President Peter um, Pellegrini. He said um, that Ukraine should sort things out as soon as possible. Otherwise, Slovakia wouldn't, would eventually have to take some retaliatory measures. So in which direction is this heading? Well, at the moment, definitely uh, the, um, the, the, the Hungarian and Slovak leaderships have decided to go for uh, ramping up the conflict uh, and making things more difficult for Ukraine. Um, but that's not where the other EU member states want to go. Um, they are much more united around uh, around maintaining support for Ukraine. Um, and I think also this holding up of military aid for Ukraine, this is a card that Viktor Orban, the Prime Minister of Hungary in particular, has played many times. He's blocked uh, the um, aid to, uh, to, to Ukraine on many different occasions for, for different purposes. Um, for example, in order to, to try to get more funds uh, from the EU itself, which were blocked because of rule of law failures in Hungary and corruption. So th this is a, a card that he's played before. Uh, and the EU mem other EU members are getting very um, uh, annoyed about this because it's, it's happening over and over again. And what it's leading to is increasing pressure for more qualified majority voting and other ways of preventing uh, a veto by one member state on these issues and others. So I, I think over the longer term, it's going to lead to more pressure for um, one member state not to be able to hold up all of the others through this unanimity rule. Do you think there should be a conversation between Hungary and Ukraine in this case? 
I'm not sure that Hunt conversation is going to make much of a difference here. Mm -hmm. We saw the way that um, Prime Minister Orban, uh, his last meeting with uh, with Zelensky didn't go well. Uh, this, uh, I, I think dialogue has been there from the start. Uh, the issue is about orientation. It's about the geopolitical orientation of Hungary um, and attitude towards Russia, which is very different from that of the rest of the EU. Um, and what's problematic is that in foreign policy, uh, the EU has uh, has to agree on many things. Um, and just having one member state disagreeing can hold things up on a whole range of issues. This is not just about Ukraine and Russia, but also many other issues. For example, voting on com in, the, in the United Nations, common positions uh, on the Middle East, common positions on China. On all of these areas, um, over and over in the past years, uh, Hungary has held up a common EU agreement. That's causing a systemic problem for EU foreign policy. And I think that's what the other members will now want to address. Mm -hmm. Well, very interesting. Um, and thank you very much for shedding light on this. Uh, well, very chaotic and um, interesting situation. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And thank you very much for watching World Talks. We will be back with some more news and commentary for you.